Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 and I have another thing in the mail. Uh, so this is going to be sort of a long term project because I don't have anything with me currently to test it so I'll have to wait till I go home. Uh, plus if it needs the parts that I think it's going to need, uh, I'm going to have to figure something out for that. Let's just uh, tear it open though and see what's in here. So we have a cardboard box. Very interesting. <laughs> Let's see if we can get into here. Huh, isn't that interesting? So they just cut strips of uh, cardboard boxes and made a box out of a box. Cool. Anywho, this is what I've ordered. Oh, and it comes with rubber bands. Just for fun, I'm going to see if we could use these later on in this video. <laughs> anyway, this is what I've ordered. I've been feeling a little retro, so... Let's see, 20 internet points for whoever can name what this is already. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a Sony Walkman uh, tape player. And this is a guy right here. This is a cassette player. And from what I've read, obviously there's a dent that I'm going to have to push out here. And I've read that um, this uh, doesn't actually, uh, like it makes motor noises but doesn't play, which is kind of a, an infamous sign that the internal belt went out. So we're going to see if we can maybe botch together some of these rubber bands just to get it working today. I don't have a cassette to actually test it with. And actually, how do I open this even? Ah, I see. So there's a mechanism to actually open it. Um, yeah, that, that's okay. Uh, this does auto reverse. Um, basically, the head has elements for either side, so it doesn't have to swap anything or anything mechanically. Uh, it doesn't have to do anything like that. Uh, all it has to do is yeah, a mechanical mechanism. I see. Yeah, nice enough. Uh, all it has to do is um, you know swap which circuit it's reading from, which magnetic side. Um, there's modes for whether you want it to continuously play back to back or not. Uh, 1.5 volt DC input, and that's interesting, as opposed to like the 3 volts most mini displayers uh, use. Uh, yeah, the transport mechanism looks to be pretty tiny actually. Uh, we're going to open this up in a second and see exactly what is what. It has a analog volume, a uh, battery LED, uh, pretty cool. Um, and Mega Bass, you can actually turn it on, or medium, or off. Nice. Headphone jack, uh, just some screws. Yeah, this is metal. This actually feels pretty nice. I have a uh, cheaper GE um, Walkman, and it looks like someone might have been in this. They took off the, the label here to get at the screws, so that might be a good or a bad thing. Probably bad. Uh, other than that, we have Adobe NR. This switch is really loose, so it looks like someone has been in this and broke off the switch. Well, damn. Um, so I'm probably going to have to replace that switch in addition to whatever other fix I need to do. Here's the battery compartment. Oh, I was hoping it would be captive. And oh yeah, this takes a AA battery, so let me grab, hopefully this is charged and see how I'm gonna stick this in. Ah, oh, it takes either a double A or one of those gumstick batteries. That's pretty neat. So it looks like it maybe goes in this way and we're just gonna try playing. Nothing happens, no lights come on. Maybe my battery's dead. Here, give me a sec. Okay, let's try a gumstick battery that I, Oh. Son of a... So these take a different size gumstick battery than the um, mini displayers use. You can see I just took this one out of my mini displayer and it does not fit. So I'm going to have to scrounge up a AA battery as hard as that might be. Okay, this should be a fresh battery. Let's see if we get anything at all. Okay. I can hear it. It is spinning actually. Stop. Fast forward. Rewind. 
huh, it actually does semi sort of work. Uh, the seller said it didn't turn on at all. I wonder if something was wrong with their battery. Unfortunately, I don't have anything to test it with. Um, I don't have any cassette tapes on me. I have some back home. But yeah, it looks like it actually does work, mechanically speaking. Uh, we're going to have to see about whether there's something wrong with, you know, headphone jack volume. We are going to have to fix this. So let's uh, do an impromptu teardown anyways. Uh, yeah, interestingly enough, it came in this case, which is kind of nice if it weren't for the fact that it's really yellow and kind of grubby. So yeah, I'm going to have to wash my hands for that one. So let's uh, just kind of get into this, I guess. So let me just get a pair of tweezers and a screwdriver. So it should be a matter of taking out various screws that we see. Okay, let's see. Maybe we do have to actually open the door. Yeah, this mechanism doesn't hold all that well. It's really sensitive, so probably going to have to push out that little dent. Maybe it's uh, making it a little too springy. So, let's see. Oh, missed the one obvious screw that I mentioned. <laughs> and there is like a circular thing here. I'm not sure what that... That might be a plug covering another screw, so we might need to get in there. Okay, I can already feel it's coming loose. So we're just going to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle it. Perhaps, yep, there's a clip right here. Get in there. And we're going to have to kind of tilt it this way so we can clear these switches and stuff. Ooh. Okay, so this hinge mechanism actually relies on this case to keep it captive. So that is something to keep in mind. So this entire thing looks like it might come out. Yep. Want to be careful because the door is still in there. The, uh, sorry, the sort of other hinge part. So we're going to have to remove the screws for that. And we shall keep that separate. So now the doors come out. It's basically just aluminum and then these two uh, metal parts that are screwed into the bottom case. So we shall keep the screws in with those. So you can see the mechanism in here. Okay, so we're getting closer. You can see there's a flex cable that actually goes to the head, which routes down into the body via the four uh, wires in there. We're very close to getting into this. I almost wonder, I might take a knife and pull that little bung out just to see if there's a screw in there. No, that's actually an adjustment. That's probably for the uh, tape speed adjustment. Um, a lot of times there's a like a, a, a servo circuit in there so that you can control the tape speed because as your battery voltage dies, you don't want your tape speeding up or slowing down. So you have a like a, a little op amp compensator circuit in order to keep it constant for you. So that's what that is. However, that does not help us open this guy. Oh, there we go. And part of a switch popped out, so we're going to have to make sure uh, wherever the heck this guy went. Here, uh, this guy goes back in properly. Okay, so here's the tape um, flat flex cable. And it's labeled fast forward, left, right, reverse. Well, not fast forward, forward, left, right, reverse, left, right, and then ref. So yeah, that's um, pretty cool actually. You can Zoom in on that. A lot of test points, actually. And everything is labeled. Headphone out, left, right. I guess ref means analog ground. And another flat flux cable here. Looks like uh, motor related, because it actually, yeah, the motor is in here. And that's probably going to be a brushed motor. And, oh, let's see. So that broken switch here. 
Huh. So yeah, it, the Adobe NR switch looks like uh, the plastic's not broken on the fingers under there, and it looks like the switch is intact, actually. Uh, so maybe whoever was sticking it back together back on there didn't locate the position of the switch correctly. So yeah, that switch isn't broken, so that's a good sign that I don't have to replace that. <laughs> so yeah, here's the uh, mechanism. So let's see maybe if we can get this board off. Uh, hopefully I don't have to desolder everything. Though that might be a possibility. Okay, so there's a screw I can see right here. Sony has a very nice uh, methodology where they put the, this like double arrow pointing at any screw that you need to remove to get to the next layer of the assembly. And that's really nice because it lets you know, you know, what order you have to do things, kind of. Okay, that screws out. Okay, now the board is loosey-goosey. Good. So, you're going to carefully wiggle it. Feels like there's something catching on this side. So, yep. Okay, so this plastic uh, bezel on the top, there's a little clip here that holds that side in. So we're going to carefully lever this out of the way, careful not to break the motor wires. And you can see exactly how the uh, transport mechanism, the belt for it, is routed. It goes over the pulley on the motor, uh, over this part here, goes over this pulley here, goes all the way back around to this. These are kind of heavier materials, so uh, they're sort of, you know, like act as flyweights, say sort of in a mechanical way regulate the speed um, because of their mass and inertia. Anyway, and the belt goes back over here and then back to the motor. So if you wanted to replace the belt, that would be a good place to start. This motor is really loose actually, it feels like. So even though it mechanically worked for now, I would probably go and replace this. Um, and the belt is fairly thin actually. So I had an idea in, in the case that this was actually... Um, you know, uh, the belt was actually broken. Uh, I had an idea of getting some flexible filament um, some for my 3D printer and printing out a, a circle at a correct diameter, basically. And then I might have to trim some of it and trying to fit this and see if you could actually 3D print a belt for a tape mechanism, because that would be really neat. Uh, another thing that I'm seeing here is a lot of... Uh, there's a sort of lubricant is really dried up and it looks like some of this is kind of rusted so that's a little bit worrying uh, so that might be something that uh, needs to be lubricated um, I'll probably use white lithium grease once I get home and there's also quite a bit of dust on here so let's just remove that I really wish now that I had something that I could actually test this out with a tape. Yeah, in terms of this though, maybe this is supposed to be kind of loose because it it didn't have that much torque though when I tried it. It did uh, it did have enough power to move the spools though, and it's looking like there's some rust on some of these parts. Um, so this has had a pretty rough life. You can see the serial number is uh, 60,706, which actually isn't that large of a number. <laughs> uh, we can see here the, the entire mechanism. And there's some missing parts here. It's interesting. I know there's a higher end model that actually uses. Um, uh, an FM radio or has an FM radio built in and it uses the same circuit board I believe and everything else oh there's a little switch here too it's probably for uh, it detects whether it's fast forward or not or something like that and here's a play oh yeah here forward reverse there you go I keep saying fast forward I keep meaning forward though so this detects whether it's in forward or reverse and then this switch detects whether the the play is activated or not uh, yeah and you can see here the play button actually goes down to this piece of metal that pushes on that. That's clever. So yeah, um, we have our battery contacts there. Red, black, if you wanted to hack it or something to add an external battery pack, that would be easy to do. And uh, the DC input there. Uh, yeah, and 
and here's a potentiometer. This looks to be the um, the chip that actually does the servo action for the motor because it's right near the leads uh, or the solder pads are right on the other side there. And um, it's right next to a potentiometer. So I'm guessing that is actually the speed control. So what we saw when we opened the case, there's a hole. Ah, the hole was actually to the bottom side of that. Ah, that's clever. So that uh, surface mount potentiometer actually has an adjustment uh, hole cut in the PCB so that you can actually get a little screwdriver and adjust it from the other side. That's pretty clever. Uh, there's power, uh, different channel, left channel in, out, on, off for the, um, the switch there, uh, metal, regular. Yeah, this is very well labeled. If you wanted to modify this and hack it, you very well could. So I'm going to actually stick this back together because there's no point. Uh, it seems like it mechanically works, actually. Um, the only question is, because that belt is kind of loose, there might be a problem with torque. It might um, not actually have enough torque to move a tape. I uh, Actually, I can do it right now. When I press play, actually there's, a, there's quite a bit of torque. I would say that would be plenty enough to actually play a tape. You can see when I hold it though, that simulates it being at the end of the tape. And then it starts moving the other one. So yeah, uh, mechanically speaking, this all feels okay. So I'm going to put this back together now. And don't forget the switch here. And so when we're putting this back together, we're going to want to make sure that all the switches are in the correct placements. Okay, so make sure this switch is in here. Make sure it works before we put it back. And so this is in. Test out the switches here. Oh, this one switch doesn't want to work. Okay. Yeah, so it wasn't aligned correctly. So. Yeah, there we go. So this switch can actually travel um, further outside of kind of the range of the actual plastic inside. So it's important to align this very carefully. You can see now it's all assembled correctly. So let's go about putting this back together. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Okay, so these two screws actually go in the bottom through the hinge. So before I put them on, I'm going to want to see about maybe not losing those two screws and mechanically adjusting uh, the top. Try to take out a bit of the bulge. This is actually pretty thick metal, so would have had to put quite a bit of force in there to actually bend it in the first place. So very similar to how mini disc uh, players latches work, there's a separate piece of metal that's actually, this one isn't screwed in, it is actually um, like heat staked in almost. It's probably mechanical actually. Um, and so that's in there permanently and that's what actually it relies on to catch. This is a harder metal than the actual aluminum of the case. You can see the metal actually scratches pretty easily. So if they were to rely on the aluminum of the case, it would not go so well, honestly. Yeah, so we can pretty easily just put this. I wonder what size, uh, you know, gumstick battery this actually would take. Then that would be interesting. Uh, there's no point, pretty much. You get better capacity from a double A, so there's no practical point for that. Yeah, you can see play. Maybe you can't switch. Huh. So I'm trying to, oh, okay, that's not, that's for mode switch. So direction is the green one. Ooh, 
And very interestingly, you can see that the pinch roller kind of switches depending on which direction. I'm guessing it defaults to uh, one of the positions if there's no tape in because it's there's nothing in there. Because as soon as I switch, it does it for a second. Ah, there's like a toggle mechanism. Interesting. Yeah, that must be it. Then... Rewind, fast forward, stop. Everything seems like it actually works. So I don't know why the seller sold this as broken. They probably didn't thoroughly test, honestly. So... Yeah, let's just screw this back in then. This may or may not be finicky. And when I say may or may not, it looks like it's definitely going to be finicky. There must be part inside here. Okay, it looks like I'm going to have to loosen this guy up. So I can actually get access, uh, get that hinge back in there. So this isn't as straightforward as I would have hoped. Give me enough wiggle room. Okay, one side is in. Yeah, it looks like it's pressed between kind of two different parts like the outer casing and inner frame. There we go. Yeah, so there's an inner metal frame that's made of steel, and you got to press it between that, which is actually where the threads are for the screw, and the outer aluminum part as well. So we are going to want to... Yeah. I don't want to do that carefully, though. Put these two screws back in. So I guess this turned out to be more of a teardown than an actual repair. <laughs> because as far as I can tell, the belts work. Maybe, like I said, they didn't actually test it out, or they didn't test it with a, uh, a battery that actually had enough power, or any of the other million reasons. Oftentimes I find that a lot of these testers or resellers, they'll get these in batches. They'll test like maybe the best looking ones that have the least amount of damage and they'll sell those at the highest price, obviously. And then when it comes to um, units like this where it's dinged up, it, this is physically not in the best condition, they'll just kind of maybe throw any battery into it, give it one second if it doesn't work immediately and then just toss it in the, um, the broken pile. Which is great because people like me then get this for uber cheap. So yeah, now this is in there. I'm almost wondering, it doesn't look like this screw's capped it to the outer shell. You might actually be able to remove the shell without removing these two screws and leave the door attached. Which would actually make it easier because then when you go to reassemble it, uh, the screws are already in there and you can just, you know. So anyway, we'll open this guy and get this arm back out. And this needs to go upside down back in here so we are going to need to get a screw oh god this is going to be horrible also and we need to line this up while trying to screw it in i might need to do this with both hands <laughs> i don't think this is going to work otherwise yeah there we go there and then the other screw in. So these are actually very easy to take apart and put together. I downloaded the service manual for this just in case the belt was uh, damaged and destroyed then I could actually figure out how to re-add a new one. Yeah, looks like this works. Closes. Opens. Still plays. Yeah, doesn't seem like anything's wrong with it. Now, I guess the next thing is to plug some headphones in and see if any any sound at all comes out. 
so I have my speakers here. I'm just going to patch in. Put it hopefully to a reasonable volume. Put the volume down on the unit. So I can hear sort of buzzing if I turn it up, that is. I mean, normally you wouldn't have it turned up that loud. So that probably doesn't sound too good. It might need the caps replaced inside of it, actually, because um, I don't think it should be making that whiny sound uh, in addition to you know, kind of in parallel with the motor drive. So that might actually need um, some surface mount capacitor replacement. But I won't really know until I actually get a cassette tape to test this with. Anyway, yeah, I don't think I mentioned this. This is the WM2091. And I've read, you know, so-so reviews about this model in particular. Um, about, you know, the mechanical transport kind of is cheap uh, compared to some of the higher end models. So it has a tendency to have a lot more, you know, mechanical problems. But anyway, I'm um, going to hopefully get a cassette to be able to test this. So that'll be in a little while. That'll be after I get a chance to go back home. But at least electrically, it looks like it works. Um, mechanically, it definitely works. So we won't really know that until we test it out. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching this video. And um, yeah, sorry for rambling for so long. And additionally, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate uh, you guys using the eBay affiliate links and uh, whatnot that I put down below uh, because it actually makes it so that I can afford uh, random stuff every month in order to tear it down. Uh, broken stuff so that I can actually do repairs, but unfortunately this actually ended up working So this was just a tear down for now. I might need to actually do a future uh, Repair depending on whether this actually plays tapes or not. Anyway um, Yeah, so if you guys have any questions, you know do what you do down below and I'll see you guys next time